Hi everyone, this is Dr. Meyer here with a video for you on ternary form. Let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I would recommend watching the video on binary form if you haven't already. It will help you to better understand some of the ideas in this video. So what is ternary form? In ternary form, each section is self-contained, both thematically and tonally. That means each section contains unique and complete themes and also end in an authentic cadence in its respective key area. The first section called A will be in the home key and introduce the themes of the section. The second section called the B section is generally in a contrasting but sometimes closely related key Sometimes the dominant or the parallel minor of the home key of the A section, so we have major 5 or minor 1. However, in many classical period works, the B section doesn't modulate at all and has a contrasting material that's in its theme. It usually also has some contrasting character a little bit. For example, if the A section is sort of stiff and formal, the B section might be a little bit more melodious or flowing. Commonly, the third section, or the return of the A section, will feature more ornamentation than the first time we heard it. In these cases, the last section we will sometimes label as A prime to indicate that it's slightly different from the first section, but still A material. This is the basic form that we're going to call simple ternary. The following slides are an example of simple ternary by Chopin. In his prelude in D-flat major, he begins sweetly with a flowing melody in D-flat major. Here's the first few bars. This A section maintains this character and key throughout until it closes on an imperfect authentic cadence in D-flat some number of measures later. The B section changes dramatically. Well, it is Romanticism and Chopin after all. From D major, we go to the parallel minor, but since D-flat minor is not an actual key possibility in notation, Chopin moves us to C-sharp minor, so we have an N harmonic there. This section is sort of dark and brooding with the melody sort of moving to the bass voice. Have a listen to this. It continues in this way until a cadence, which leads us back to the A section. And here it is, leading back to A, have a listen. cadence on G sharp major right before the double bar here is enharmonically the dominant of B, excuse me, D flat major, which is also respelled as an A flat major chord. So with the short little lead in, we're back to our sweet and melodious D flat major once again until the piece closes. We have two contrasting sections, the A and the B, with our third full return of A here. The keys are distantly related, but they don't necessarily have to be in order for them to be contrasting. It's still ternary. The character is generally contrasting as well, which helps to differentiate the sections. Now that you have the basics down, we can talk about some variations with relation to ternary form. If the piece does not exhibit your basic A, B, A structure of ternary form, 
It's said to be expanded. These expansions can look like a repetition of any of its sections or adding auxiliary members such as an introduction, a transition, a retransition, or even a coda. Although it'd be pretty unlikely for all of these expansions to show up in one piece, it's not unheard of by any means, but we like to expand our ternary. Another variation of ternary often found in instrumental music is called compound ternary. We call it compound because within each section, a smaller form can be found, such as simple or rounded binary, or even a ternary inside of each of the sections. We often see these play out in forms like minuet and trio, or a da capo aria. In both the minuet and trio and da capo aria, the repeats are ignored when we have the reprise of the A section, as we would in a traditional minuet and trio. So if you're analyzing a piece, it might be helpful to make a formal chart just to kind of get a big picture and see if you've actually got a compound ternary on your hands. One final version is the military march form. It's a sort of binary and sort of ternary, and it is actually a descendant of the minuet and trio form, which we recall as compound ternary. So after a short fanfare here from Stars and Stripes Forever, the A section splits into two subsections called the first strain and the second strain. Here's the second. The trio. adds a flat, or removes a sharp, from the key signature, modulating us to the key of the subdominant. Most marches repeat this trio, but they place a short and intensely dramatic passage in between these repetitions, which we call the dogfight, or the break strain. It sounds like this. <laughs> The return of B sees the soft trio melodies amplified and celebrated until the conclusion of the form. The iconic piccolo solo in Stars and Stripes Forever is featured at this particular point in the form. Have a listen. <laughs> There's your military march form. Now it's your turn to practice. Rather than analyzing a piece for form, answer these questions and check your understanding. So if a piece is in ternary and we have added a retransition to help modulate back to the home key in the A section reprise, what can we say about this form? And what is the difference between ternary and rounded binary form? Hmm. Take your time and pause here now to answer these questions. The answer to the first question, of course, if we add any part to our ternary form, we have expanded it. So an expanded ternary. Try not to confuse compounded and expanded as sort of these terms, they do mean different things. The second question, of course, there's some multiple parts here. So the reprise of A at the end of our rounded binary is significantly shorter than it is in the ternary form. And the A and B section will often share motives, keys, rhythms, etc. in the rounded binary, but our B section in Ternary is often drastically contrasting and definitely its own portion of the form. In this video, we learned that ternary is a three-part form, diagrammed A, B, A. Unlike rounded binary, the sections are usually pretty distinguished from one another in a number of ways. 
If we add any part, like an intro, coda, or the like, our ternary form has become expanded. If within each section of the form we find a smaller form inside, we dub this compound ternary, just like the minuet and trio, which serves as the inspiration for our military march form. I promise we'll get some more practice in class and we can look at whole pieces, but for now, that is all. Thanks for watching.